boy. Nice and cool in the shade. to look at what we're facing from either a positive way, a negative way, a circumstantial way, a God-directed way, a intellectual way, a spiritual way. There's a lot that occurs that God uses that we look at sometimes and say, oh, well, this is obviously something that God never intended for me because it's too big for me to handle. Or, well, God wouldn't let that happen to me. I mean, after all, I'm one of his children. Part of having a personal relationship with God is the idea that he's personal and that when you have a need to know, you can always go to him and ask him for wisdom because you see, knowledge is just simply seeing and understanding, or seeing and taking in information. And that's just information. It's just data. It's just something that indicates things that we see and can hear and can touch and can feel. But it doesn't mean that it's wisdom. Wisdom is something that allows us to see beyond just the data and to put the pieces together so that we can see a complete picture of what's going on. God always has that picture in mind when he's looking at you. And so, when we lack wisdom, God says that we should, if we lack wisdom, ask him to give it to us because he would not chastise us for asking, but rather he would desire for us to ask him first than to go off with our own ideas of what's going on. Seeking wisdom from Him is a commandment from the Lord. But like any other directive statement that God gives us, sometimes we choose to listen and sometimes we don't. Mastery over the believer. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. John 13, 13. Our Lord never insists on having authority. He never says, thou shalt. He leaves us perfectly free, so free that we can spit in his face as men did, so free that we could put him to death as men did, so free that he will never say a word. But when his life has been created in me by his redemption, I instantly recognize his right to absolute authority over me. It is a moral domination. Thou art worthy. It is only the unworthy in me that refuses to bow down to the worthiness of God to require me to be in absolute subjection to him. If when I meet a man who is more holy than myself, I do not recognize his worthiness and obey what comes through him, it is a revelation of the unworthy in me. God educates us by means of people who are a little better than we are. Not intellectually, but holily. Until we get under domination of the Lord himself, and then the whole attitude of the life is one of obedience to him. You see, if there's another person who appears to be better than we are, then we react to that, and we feel as though we need to pick and choose and find how we're better rather than honor the holiness that God has created in them. If our Lord insisted upon obedience, he would become a taskmaster and he would cease to have any authority. He never insists on obedience, but when we do see him, we obey him instantly. He is easily Lord and we live in adoration of him from morning till night. The revelation of my growth in grace is the way in which I look upon obedience. Do I obey? We have to rescue the word obedience from the mire. 
Obedience is only possible between equals. It is the relationship between a father and son, not between master and servant. I and my father are one. Though he were a son, yet he learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. The son's obedience was as redeemer because he was son, not in order to be son. In other words, we don't become a Christian because we obey. We obey because we're a Christian. In other words, we choose to obey instantly those things that God says because he has made us equal with him and he involves us in his holiness to be complete and filled with that nature that he has that would not seek its own glory but seek the glory of him who sent him so as jesus has sent us we don't seek our own glory or our own holiness or our own righteousness but we seek to honor him who has made us holy and righteous and deserves all honor and praise for it and because of love we enjoy doing that it's hard to put the pieces together with chambers sometimes in that way because we're so far selfish and more selfish than most any other being that have lived in the centuries actually because we hide our selfishness in a form of righteousness that God finds abhorrent because we take for granted the things that were given us and we don't count the cost of what Jesus did by being obedient to the Father and giving us an opportunity to do the same. Who do you want to be? Like Jesus? Or do you want to be like your image of who you think you are? The choice is yours. He wants to create in us an image of himself through us. We just have to obey.